Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we are checking out the Engways L20 2.0, a very strong competitor to the electric 3.0 e-bike. Now it is a foldable step-through aluminum frame, 52 volt, 13 amp hour lithium ion removable battery, 750 watts with 1,125 watt peak output brushless hub motor, 75 newton meters of torque, up to 28 miles per hour with pedal assist, up to 20 miles per hour with throttle alone, 80 mile maximum range, 20 inch wheel size, fat tire e-bike. So the e-bike comes out of the box 80% pre-assembled, just like most e-bikes. Now, I did not find any screws that was loose or anything out of place in the 80% pre-assembled bike, so they did a good job in assembling it. Now, the other 20% was very easy to assemble. Now, here's a tip. Put on the front fender before installing the front tire. Otherwise, the fender support has to be removed and reattached. Not a big deal, but you can save a little bit of time. Now, all of the tools necessary are provided. It has adjustable front fork suspension and the seat post suspension. Now, the seat post suspension is an extra cost on the XP3. Tires are the 20 inch by three inch anti-skid knobby fat tires and has 180 millimeter disc brakes front and rear, just like the XP3. However, the XP3 now comes with hydraulic brakes instead of mechanical brakes. It has upgraded front headlights, same as the XP3, rear tail light with hand brake activated brake light. Now the XP3 does not have this feature. It has plush, ergonomic, and very comfortable, flippable seat to access the battery. The battery is a 52 volt, 13 amp hour lithium ion battery. The XP3 comes with 48 volt, 10 amp hour battery with an optional 14 amp hour battery for an extra $200. Now, I love that the keys go in directly on the battery with easy access from the top instead of the bottom, which is a pain on the XP3. The key is removable in the off and the lock positions, but needs to stay in on the power on mode. It comes with a 58.8 volt 2 amp charger, which charges the battery in about five to six hours. It has up to 80 miles of range with 20 miles per hour throttle only or 28 miles per hour with pedal assist. Now the screwed on rear luggage rack supports up to 25 kilograms or 55.1 pounds. Whereas the XP3 comes with a welded on rear rack that supports up to 150 pounds but it does come with a front luggage rack that supports up to eight kilograms. Now the XP3 does not come with a front luggage rack and it is an extra purchase. It has front and rear fenders and a very heavy duty kickstand. To fold the e-bike, simply unlock and fold. You can use the support handle to facilitate the fold. There is a stand to hold the bike off the ground as well. Now, I really like that the battery is removable in the folded or in the locked position since it is externally mounted instead of within the frame. But the wires get exposed because they are tunneled through the front. So I don't know which configuration I like better, the external battery with exposed wires or the internal battery style that is only removable when it is folded. The adjustable height handlebar is removable and the base 
falls down for easy transportation just like the XP3. It has grippy hand grips that don't rotate unlike the XP3. Now I don't understand why electric doesn't fix this issue. The throttle is the half twist type, same as the XP3. We have a small pedestrian bell that isn't that loud, but it does the job and it comes with the bike. Next, we have the operational control unit, the LCD display, and the seven speed gear controller with two levers, one to downshift and one to upshift gears. Now the headlight is mounted on the front luggage rack, so the headlight doesn't move in the direction of travel. I'm probably gonna mount it on the fender mount screw like the XP3. To power on the e-bike, turn the key to the ignition position. The control unit has five buttons, the power button, plus and minus buttons, the headlight button, and the switch button. Long press the power button on the control unit. The LCD display turns on. We have the battery level, speed indicator, pedal assist indicator. The plus button increases and the minus button decreases the pedal assist mode from zero to five. The throttle will be active in one to five pedal assist modes, but inactive in the zero mode. But in the zero mode, and if you need assistance walking the e-bike, hold the minus button for push assistance. The e-bike will run at six kilometers per hour. Release the minus button to exit. We have the trip distance indicator. Press the switch button to toggle through trip, odometer, maximum speed, and the average speed. Press the headlight button to turn on the front and the rear lights. Once it is turned on, the display screen will automatically dim. And squeezing either of the brakes will illuminate the tail light. Now the XP3 does not have this feature. Press both the plus and the minus buttons simultaneously to enter into the settings. The TC is the trip distance reset. Short press the switch button. N means no reset and Y means yes to reset every time the bike is turned on. Short press the switch button to go back. Next is the BL. The BL stands for backlighting. We have settings one, two, and three. Three being the brightest. Next is UN, the metric or imperial options. U1 is imperial and U2 is metric. Those are the three settings. Long press the switch button to save and return to the main screen. So I did remove the front luggage rack. And also I moved the headlight to the front fender mount. And the slack of the cable was shoved into the frame. I think it looks sportier and also it is easier to maneuver in tight spaces inside of the house. The seat height is about 35 inches from the ground and that is due to the extra three inches for the seat post suspension. All right guys, so here we go on the bike trail. Kind of a semi clear day here with a little bit of cloud. So let's check it out here. Battery is fully charged. I'm on uh, pedal assist mode number one. So, and my speed is up to seven. Okay, so let's go check it out. Pedaling. Okay, it's kicking in and we are cruising at 10 miles an hour on pedal assist number one. So 
you want to go nice and slow this is the speed that you want oh yeah this is nice nice slow cruise and speed number two well i'm going 11 miles an hour now okay pedal assist two Thirteen, around thirteen and a half miles per hour. Not that much difference from pedal assist number one. Okay, number three. Oh yeah, and it kicks in. It lunges forward, so you gotta be careful with that. We're going fifteen miles an hour, and still not that much different from. Pedal assist number one, not a great leap. Okay, number four. Okay, I gotta pedal a lot faster because we're going at 20 miles an hour, 20.7. Okay, this is a nice fast speed. So this speed, 20 miles an hour, will be class 2 e-bike speed. A lot of people walking the path today. And this side mirror is just awesome. If you don't have one, like night and day you can see everything that's behind you is perfect very safe you need a side mirror okay some people coming so we'll wait until I pass them on both sides. Okay, pedal assist number five. I gotta pedal a lot faster now. Oh, very hard to catch up and stay engaged. So you gotta pedal really, really fast. So I'm going 28 miles an hour now. Pedal assist five. But the speed at which I have to pedal is too fast for me. Woo. Yeah, your legs gotta pedal a lot faster. And it's too fast for me. And if you pedal just a little bit, the pedal assist kicks in and it is going too fast. Maybe that is due to the final seventh speed sprocket having maybe one or two too many teeth, too many gears. Kind of like the electric 2.0 had that same issue. Okay. I'm gonna downshift to number four because I can still be engaged. Okay, 20 miles an hour. The electric 3.0 doesn't have that issue. I'm still engaged in uh, pedal assist number five. I can pedal to go faster because I'm still engaged but this bike I have to pedal so fast that I cannot keep up at 28 miles an hour and the electric I actually went 30 miles an hour and at times I was able to go 32 miles an hour so pedal assist number four on this bike 
you are sort of engaged at the top of the speed but yet you still gotta pedal pretty fast to stay engaged so let's see pedal assist number three we'll slow down a little bit okay I am fully engaged at 15 miles an hour I wish it was about 17 miles an hour that would be perfect for speed number three okay some people here okay I'm gonna pass on but I'm gonna use throttle only just throttle only and I'm going at the maximum speed of 21 miles an hour so this is throttle only 21 miles an hour which is pretty good if you want to use throttle only you don't want to pedal you're still going 21 miles an hour which is pretty fast. Like I said, that will be class two e-bike speed. And class three e-bike speed is 28 miles per hour. Okay, now I'm pedaling only at PAS3. And I am exerting myself to pedal faster stay engaged and pedal at 17 and a half miles an hour so i'm going to slow down here and downshift to pedal assist one so i can still pedal around turns don't be pedaling in assist number three or four or five because you'll be going too fast so pedal assist one is perfect at 10 miles an hour I'm still engaged and I can use my throttle to help out or you could even go up to pedal assist number two but you know this e-bikes pedal assist number two is actually slower than pedal assist number one okay now I'm kind of on a straight way yeah, it doesn't go that much faster. Only like 12 miles an hour. So, you need to change that. At what pedal assist and how many speed or miles per hour, kilometers per hour you can go. So you can adjust it to your liking. Now, there is a video that goes through the advanced settings. I'm going to go to pedal assist number three. So I can go a little faster. It tells you all about the advanced settings and I tried it out and it goes beyond the regular settings, the general settings that I showed you. It goes beyond and I believe there is a parameter that you can adjust the speed at which the e-bike goes on every level of the pedal assist. One, two, three, four, five. But this e-bike does not have those parameters. I could only get three more parameters. Whereas on the video, he was showing like eight to nine parameters. So yeah, I think they did something to this e-bike or maybe the password is needed to go and unlock more parameters in the advanced setting so here we're just cruising at 15 miles an hour on PAS3 which is just perfect because you are somewhat exerting yourself and you are going at 15 miles an hour now I'll slow down on this turn I believe you can still make this at on pedal assist number three because it doesn't really lunge forward there now it just lunged a very slight lunge so you can actually make turns with PAS3 on this e-bike whereas the electric I couldn't I had to downshift to number one 
All right, we're going into the park. Now, this park used to be really good. I go here all the time to fly. But last year, during the summer, we had a rain event. And that made a lot of goat heads. You know what I'm talking about? Those little round, pesky little thorny, like devil's head, some people call it. Well, a lot of those plants erupted here and it dried up and you know with the wind the goat heads just travel all over the place so even when i go into this park with my car my car comes out with a bunch of goat heads stuck on the tire so this is not a very bike friendly park anymore even on this bike path because those goat heads can just blow in the wind and just end up over here and you step on it you got a flat tire and these are hard to replace on these e-bikes and these e-bikes are heavy to roll around and especially with the fat tires the fat tires get deflated you're riding on your rims and you don't want to do that so you end up trying to lift the e-bike up a little bit to not ride on the tires and the rim it's very heavy so you always have to carry a fix a flat kind of kit when you're riding e-bikes because you're going far away from the base station or your car so very important to take along a fix a flat kit so i'm going to turn around over here i'm just using my throttle and i'm going to start heading back okay get up to speed with the throttle and start pedaling at 15 14 15 miles an hour which is just right just to cruise but if you want to save some time and get a little bit of a workout pedal assist 4 is just perfect pedal assist 5 you gotta pedal too fast on this e-bike Okay, here comes a little hill. I'm on speed seven, pedal assist number three. And I'll use the throttle to help me out. It is as if I'm going on pedal assist number four. But I have full engagement. I'm going 20 miles an hour. And look at this hill here. It's a pretty steep hill. And I'm going up at 18 miles an hour, 17 miles an hour and keeping steady at 17 now up to 18 and up to 19. Not bad. So hill climbing is no problem in this bike, even on PAS3. So when shopping for an e-bike, consider how fast and the amount of pedaling you are planning on doing. Now there's the class one, the class two, and the class three e-bikes. Class one is only pedal assist, up to 20 miles per hour. Class two is pedal assist and throttle, up to 20 miles per hour. Class three is pedal assist and throttle, up to 28 miles per hour. The Engway L20 2.0 is a class three e-bike. Now the design and build quality is impressive. It is one solid e-bike. And because it is foldable, it will fit in the back of a minivan with more than enough room for another additional foldable e-bike. Some users may find the 68.3 pound weight of the e-bike slightly too heavy when loading it into a vehicle or carrying it up the stairs. But even if you are not physically fit, the electric pedal assist and the throttle assist is smooth and responsive, making uphill climbs and long distance rides a breeze. 
so you can get out there and enjoy the outdoors. And the price is only $799 with a 52 volt, 13 amp hour battery with a maximum of 80 miles of range, as opposed to the electric XP3, which is $999 and it comes with a 48 volt, 10 amp hour battery with a maximum of 45 miles of range. So if you want to check it out, the link to the e-bike is down below in the video description. So that'll do it for this video of the Engways L20 2.0. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Have a great day and we'll see you again next time.